If you're anything like me, there's gonna come a point in time where you sit down, reflect, and ask yourself, how can I actually put an icon element inside of a button within Bubble? At this point, you might already be familiar with the process of adding an icon into a text element using some custom HTML, but what you might find is that the same process doesn't apply when you're working with a button element. And that is exactly what this video is gonna help you with today. Today I'm gonna to teach you not one, but two solutions to adding icon elements inside of a button. One solution takes advantage of using emojis, and the other explains how you can actually build a custom button of your own from scratch. Now look, thankfully this one is a relatively straightforward process, so I'm gonna hand this one over to Luca, and he's gonna run through everything you need to know. Hello, so today we're gonna to go over how to add icons within a button element inside of Bubble. So, as you can see here, we've got two buttons. I'm going to show you two methods of doing this, a quick one and a more customizable one. So we have this one over here and we have this one here. Now the difference, if we jump into our bubble editor, is that this is actually a button element and this is actually a group with elements inside it um, for a lot more customization. Now, you can actually add icons within text elements using HTML code here. However, this actually does not work if we were to put it inside of a button, as you can see there. But what we can do to add a icon type thing inside of a button is actually using emojis. Now on Mac, that would be control command space, and you can add in whichever emoji you would like within the button and it comes up. But what do you do if you want to add a bubble icon into a button. What we have to do is actually create a group and have these elements within the group. Now you might be slightly worried that if you were to connect a workflow to the group and your user was to press the icon or the text, it wouldn't run the workflow. That actually doesn't happen. As long as you don't add workflows to the icon or the text, if they click the text, then it will run the workflow for the group. So you don't have to worry about that. So let's get into building this one here. What we want to do is go over to the text element and pop a text element in underneath our button there. We're going to change the text to update. We're going to uncheck make this element fixed width. We're going to get rid of the minimal width but that is zero and then we're going to fit width content so it hugs our text nicely and we're going to get rid of this to zero so it does the same for the height now we want to center this in the center of our page and a quick little shortcut to get in a group around an element or an icon we want to right click group in elements and we're going to choose row because we want our icon to sit beside our text now, as you can see, we've got our text element and we've got our group sitting around our text element. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back onto our text and align it vertically. So it's in the center and we're going to also go onto our group and we're going to go into layout and we're going to container alignment and we're going to click center. So our text hits centrally. Now the standard bubble button is actually 45 pixels in height so we'll go and add that in so it matches it exactly and if we go to the appearance tab remove the style we can add our 10 roundness now let's add a background so we're going to click black color and click whichever color you would like your button to be Perfect. Now I'm just going to change our text to white. So if you click on the text element, remove the style, go down to our color and click white. As you can see, it comes up there. Now I'm just going to bold it to make it look like our button over here. Perfect. So the next thing we want to do is drag an icon into our group here. As you can see, our group's gone red, which means we are placing something within the group. And if we click that, then 
we have our icon in our group. Now, if we remove the style, we can't see that because it's exactly the same color as our background for our group. So we're going to want to go in and change that to white so it comes up. We now head over to layout and vertically align it centrally, then it will sit nice and straight. So let's change this to home perfect. So now, as you can see, what we've done is created something that looks exactly like our button and that can function exactly like our button. But how do we get this to darken when we hover our cursor over it to let our users know that they can click it? What we would want to do is go to the conditional tab and define a condition. We want to have it when this group is hovered and the condition is the background color of this group is going to get darker. So we just select a darkness there. And now if we preview that, you can see when we hover, it changes color, which gives our users the signal that it is a button and it can be clicked. Now you can do lots of other things with this button because it is a group. Um, for example, if we wanted to add a shadow, then we just go in the shadow, go on outset, and now it's outset from the page. You can also do this to a normal standard button using the same workflow. So if we were to add a workflow onto this, let's say we want to navigate to page, user page, and if we are to preview that now, you can see that even if we click our icon, it still sends us to wherever we need to go. So that is how to add a lot of customization in how your buttons look and also add how to add icons within your buttons in Bubble. And just like that, you now know how to add your own icon element directly inside a button within Bubble. As I mentioned before, it is a super straightforward process. And so between one of these two options we've shown you today, I'm sure you'll find a solution perfect for your own application. If you found this video helpful and you wanted to stay up to date with any additional bubble resources I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. In the meantime though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.